It makes perfect sense that unusual things would take place in space, given the number of mysteries we wish to solve contained within it. Since the beginning of human space exploration, astronauts and scientists have been exposed to and have made discoveries regarding a variety of peculiar occurrences. Just like when the crew of Apollo 10 orbited the moon in 1969 and made one of the strangest discoveries, when they heard music from outer space that sounded like it came from another world. Do you like space mysteries? Want to learn more about what the cosmos might be hiding? Tune in for more videos by clicking that subscribe button and hit the bell to get notified of our brand new updates. The answer is not yes, despite what you may have read or seen this week on social media or in the promotional material for a certain television show. It is a fact that the astronauts on Apollo 10 heard some peculiar whistling sounds, which, at times, they referred to as outer space type music. But there is a very straightforward explanation that does not involve aliens for what the crew members were hearing. And this information has been readily available to the public since the 1970s. Gene Cernan, who was the pilot of the lunar module during the Apollo 10 mission, can be heard asking John Young, who was the pilot of the command module, if he hears anything during the audio recordings that were taken during the mission, which can be heard in this video from Space.com that sound like someone whistling. Cernan is the one who refers to it as music and says that it even sounds outer spacey. After some time has passed, the two men inquire with Tom Stafford, who is currently in the lunar module with Eugene Cernan, as to whether or not he hears it. They agree that it is very strange, and Young responds, we're going to have to figure out what the deal with it is. No one will believe us. Apollo 10, which was sent into space in May of 1969, cleared the way for Apollo 11, which was sent into space in July of the same year, and successfully landed two humans on the surface of the moon. The Apollo 10 astronauts traveled to the moon in a command module, and two of the crew members also had a ride in the lunar module, which brought them to an altitude of fewer than 10 miles above the surface of the moon. It turns out that the whistling sound was nothing more than interference between the VHF radios on the two separate vehicles. Michael Collins, the astronaut who piloted Apollo 11 and penned the book Carrying the Fire, recalled that NASA experts had cautioned him about the whistling. The pivotal paragraph from the book, in which Collins even says, had I not been warned about it, it would have scared the hell out of me. In 2008, NASA published online the transcripts of the Apollo 10 communications, even though the documents themselves state the broadcasts were supposed to be made public in 1982. According to the NASA History Office, NASA also uploaded the audio files to its website in the year 2012. Why, then, are now so many people on social media talking about something that didn't even happen? The reason for this is probably because of a show on the Science Channel called NASA's Unexplained Files. The atmosphere of a found footage horror film is present in the promotional video for a future episode, which discusses the outer space music. It features shaky film of the vehicles, cutaways that are riddled with static, music, and sound effects that are designed to induce anxiety, and a narrator who seems quite worried and describes the episode with the whistling as extremely unsettling. The astronauts indeed gave the impression of being amazed and perplexed by what they heard, and they bring it up more than once. On the one hand, neither of the audio recordings nor the transcripts show any indication that the event caused any concerns among the three men. The documentary also places a significant amount of attention on the fact that the whistling occurred while the astronauts were on the opposite side of the moon, where they had lost radio and visual contact with mission control for approximately an hour as expected. The narrator speaks in an ominous tone while, once again, music that would have been perfect for a horror movie plays in the background. The astronauts are on their own during this hour of the mission. They are invisible and inaudible to everyone on this planet. This does a good job of adding to the tense feeling that the show is cultivating. But the narrator never explains why the astronauts' isolation might be a significant factor in any of the possible theories about where the sound is coming from. This is a flaw in the show's production that could have been easily avoided. The fact that the three astronauts did not make any public statements about the sounds is one of the most intriguing aspects of the occurrence, 
although it is unknown how much they discussed the sound with the engineers. But Sean O'Kelly at The Verge hypothesizes that the reason the astronauts remained silent was that the guys didn't want to project anything other than a rock-hard psyche to the public. Any sign that they had lost their self-assurance while in flight could result in them being forced to make an emergency landing. This isn't the first instance where something very strange happened in space. For an even stranger incident, Vladimir Kovalyanuk, a Russian cosmonaut and a major general, has even a crazier story. He says that when he was working on the Salyut 6 space station, he noticed an object in orbit outside that was about the size of a finger. It immediately blew up and divided in two as he was observing it, and attempted to determine what it was. The two golden objects were no longer visible once they had passed into the shadow of the Earth. Or, in another instance, when NASA astronaut Leroy Chow reported that he witnessed five lights coming from the opposite direction of the sun when he was in orbit. He added that the sight left him speechless and that he was unable to adequately explain what the lights were or where they originated. According to him, they passed rapidly while maintaining a relatively regular formation, except for a second one. The investigators have tried to explain the enigma by proposing that the lights could have been Earth-based lights shining into space. These two incidents in particular, however, cannot be dismissed. Why? You should keep in mind that when astronauts are in space, it takes them a lot of time to get used to the view and light in space. So, there is a pretty big possibility that what Kolvianok and Chow saw might have just been some sort of visual trick played by their eyes on them. Kolvianok may have been experiencing a slight change of vision since his eyes were just getting used to the darkness of space right after he got out of the space station. And what Chow saw may have just been passing asteroids. Either way, there is always a possible explanation for what happened. But not for these sounds, though. Not this time. The radio interference theory is presented as a possible explanation for the sounds in the documentary trailer. Apollo 15 astronaut Al Warden, who doesn't agree with the radio theory, according to the narrator, is allowed to offer the concluding statement by the producers. Warden states that, Logic tells me that if there was something recorded on there, then there was something there. The narrator then concludes by saying, To date, the origin of the noises mentioned in the Apollo 10 recordings remains a mystery. The documentary produces no proof to back up that assertion in any way except Warden's statements. So, will we ever be able to find out what was going on behind the shiny face of the moon? We may have to wait a very long time before we get a proper explanation about what, or who, may be behind such a mystery.